So now we have the problem that we would like to have an associative algebra, but we've been given the complex octonions. So the question is, how are we going to get around the non-associativity of the octonions? Well, it turns out there's a trick. So let's say we have two elements, m and f, which are just elements of some algebra A. Then I can left multiply m onto f, and that will give me some new f prime, which is also an element of A. In this way, I can think of m as a map from f to f prime. Then I can do this again. So let's say we take an n, which is also an element of a, and we left multiply that onto mf. That'll give us some new f double prime, so that nm is a map from f to f double prime. So I've written an arrow over top of nm here just to show that the multiplication starts at the right and it moves to the left. Now I can continue doing this. So let's take some other element p, also an element of this algebra, and we left multiply it onto nmf. So in this way we have p and m is a map from f to f triple prime. And we can continue building up these chains. So the trick I'd like to propose here is that instead of uh, considering elements of the algebra A, instead we should be considering the space of maps here. So we'd like to consider the space of maps. And the reason why this might be a good idea is because maps, by definition, are associative. So in other words, f of g of h, like this, is always equal to f of g of h, like this. So let's see what happens when we take our algebra A to be the complex quaternions. So this is the first algebra that we looked at, and it is associative. So that means that for every n, m, and f in the algebra, these two things are always equal. But now we can just rewrite this as uh, m prime, where m prime is just another complex quaternion. So in other words, by building up these chains, I don't get anything new. The space of maps is nothing new. I just ended up with the original algebra again. But this is good, because it means that everything we've done with the complex quaternions can still hold. But now let's see what happens instead when we take our algebra A to be the complex octonions. So as we just showed before, this algebra is non-associative. So in other words, there exists an n, an m, and an f such that these two things are not equal. So in other words, this map here is a new map from this map here. And we do get something distinct by building up the space of maps. Now it turns out that the most general left action map of the complex octonions on themselves looks like this. where the c's here are just complex coefficients. 
Now this means that when we make chains of length four or greater, it means that we can always rewrite them in terms of shorter chains. Now it turns out that these, these octonionic chains have some special properties. So for example, when i is not equal to j, then we have that this is true. And when i is equal to j, we have this. So in other words, these chains of octonions exhibit Clifford algebra structure. Now if we count up all the degrees of freedom of this space of chains, we find that here we've got one complex degree of freedom. Here there are seven complex degrees of freedom. Here there are seven choose two. And here there are seven choose three. So when you add all of these up, we have 64 complex degrees of freedom in total. So it turns out that the, the space of chains of complex octonions um, it can be thought of as being equivalent to the eight by eight complex matrices. Or you can think of them as being equivalent to the endomorphisms on the complex octonions. Or finally, it turns out that they give a faithful representation of the complex Clifford algebra CL6. So in other words, now we have a Clifford algebra.